Sampling part two, random and non-random. Welcome to this short but sweet presentation. So random sampling. What does random sampling refer to? Well, random sampling can be described as a process of selecting people from a population by chance. Random sampling is easy to undertake when conducting research and is often seen as pretty accurate. So non-random sampling. What could this mean? What does it refer to? Well, non-random sampling is a process of which each member of a population does not have an equal chance of being selected. So in other words, a researcher can choose who to include in a sample. Now there are different types of sampling that we're going to be looking at, uh, especially today, and those are going to be five in total. And let's break this down further then and look at these five different types in detail. So the first one we have is simple random sampling, stratified random sampling, cluster random sampling, non-random systematic, and last but not least, non-random convenience. So let's have a look at these in more detail. So we're going to be looking at, firstly, simple random sampling. So when we conduct simple random sampling, uh, this means that each person or object has an equal chance of being chosen. So an equal chance. If the sample size is large, this is often a good method of collecting data. Stratified random sampling. Let's have a look at this. Well, this is a method of sampling by dividing a population into groups and subgroups, for example, separating the population of medical staff in a hospital to doctors and nurses, then randomly choosing five people from each group. So stratified random sampling, dividing a population into groups and subgroups. So moving on still further, let's have a look at cluster random sampling. Now this method of sampling involves getting a sample by using groups rather than individuals in data or information collection. For example, rather than surveying teachers in every school, randomly choose 10% of all schools and survey teachers in them. So cluster random sampling using groups rather than individuals in data and information collection. So the next type of sampling is what we call non-random systematic. So this involves choosing individuals in an ordered way, so in systematic in an ordered way at regular intervals. For example, I will select 50 people for my research 
project, but only every 10th person on my list will be chosen. So non-random systematic, choosing individuals in an ordered way at regular intervals. So let's move on to our final sampling. And this is what we call non-random convenience. And this involves selecting individuals based on convenience. Often used when a researcher wants to get the results of his or her research or study in a quick time. So we've had a look at those five different types of sampling. So let's have a, a recap and a little bit of review. So firstly, random, simple, random sampling. Each person or object has an equal chance of being chosen, so equal chance. Stratified random sampling. This is a method of sampling by dividing a population into groups and subgroups. So dividing a population into groups and subgroups. Cluster random sampling. Uh, this method of sampling involves getting a sample by using groups rather than individuals. And then non-random systematic, choosing individuals in an ordered way at regular interviews. Last but not least, non-random convenience, selecting individuals based on convenience. So those are those five different types of sampling, which you can utilize in your research to collect your data. So thanks very much for listening to this presentation on sampling. As always, take it easy and stay awesome. And Sample on.